Good morning, short stories class. Thought I'd come outside today in my driveway. I was going to have class over by my red fit, since this story is about a red car. Um, and I'm going to actually try to insert right here a picture of a Oldsmobile convertible from the 60s. Hope I got that in there. Um, but it's too uh, shady over by my car. It's nice and warm here in the sunbeam. I brought the fig tree out um, to get some rays today. So you can watch that grow in case uh, I get a little too boring for you. So I hope you're all doing well out there. You guys are continued to be my absolute all-star class with the discussion boards, getting work in. I think all we have left is you have the three-page paper on what you learned this semester and um, the essay exam, which is gonna be four questions. I'm gonna to try to let you have it for about a week to work on. You can watch the videos again, uh, but it will be four questions. And I'm gonna also send out kind of a questionnaire about uh, your experiences this semester, um, because who knows what future semesters hold in the new era of COVID-19. So I wanna know from you again, uh, as, the, as the semester comes to a close, what went well and what didn't in this class and in general with Columbia Green. So uh, you have that to look forward to. But our story for today is the red convertible. It is a, a kind of an unbelievable combination of a very sweet story about two brothers who are very devoted to one another. And of course, um, the horrors of the aftermath of war. Um, and the uh, ongoing, right up until today, uh, the horrific treatment of Native Americans at the hands of um, European-descended uh, Americans. And uh, even today with COVID-19, I'm seeing stories about how it's ravaging um, Native American reservations. And uh, apparently right before we knew enough to not be around each other. Um, one of the tribes had a big celebration together, an annual celebration, and that really spread it. And of course, it's a, attacking the old people, and older people in Native American cultures are much more valued than in a European-based culture like ours. And they have the language, they have the stories, as we saw in Yellow Woman, and they're, of course, the ones being lost at the fastest rate. So um, ever since the first uh, European set foot here in uh, what we know as the United States of America right up till this moment today uh, the Native American treatment has been um, really a genocide um, sometimes a very calculated destruction of life if not uh, a destruction of, of culture and it's a very sad story and this is just another example of it so before we get into the meat of the story and your excellent discussion board um, questions, I want to talk just, just, just one of these moments to get things clear about the two brothers because I can get their names confused as well. Henry is our narrator and Harry's very, Henry is, um, oh, see I messed it up already. Lyman is our narrator and he is uh, kind of funny. He has great luck, according to him. Uh, he works behind the scene to help Henry. We'll talk more about that. He admires his brother. He owned the, uh, a diner. He worked hard. He was very well accepted um, by the white community. So he uh, was a business person on the reservation and the nuns uh, looked after him. Those would be Catholic nuns. There are no Native American nuns that I know of. And, and, and he's the brother who, you know, seems to have all the, the what, what little good fortune there is, uh, he's the one who has it. And of course, Henry's the other brother, the older brother. Um, he's uh, also funny. He's much more reckless. Uh, he does not have luck. You know, when you were being drafted, forced into the Vietnam War, um, there was a, a lottery that you did not want to win. 
and you everyone every uh, male between a certain age was assigned a number and if you're, that number came up you're in the army now or in this case the marines or navy or whatever henry's number came up he had to go in lyman uh his number did not because as he says he always had good luck with numbers um, Henry is a, has a very large personality, much larger uh, than his younger brothers. Uh, he likes his little brother a lot. Um, he's not as in tune with other people. Lyman is very much more in tune with other people even before the war than Henry is. Henry's not bad, it's just the way they, they are. Uh, they both have a great sense of adventure. Um, I think there's the Native American sense in the story of if you can be moving, if you're in motion. Uh, they were a much more itinerant culture, um, setting up a village here, then maybe moving on, um, then, then uh, white Europeans. Uh, they both care about each other a lot. Our author, Louise Erdrich, who is Native American and one of the great living Native American writers, uh, she's saying that brothers look out for one another. Uh, they try to act in ways of support and that can sustain each other for a while at least and we do see that uh, in the story of course we have to get back to our first person narrator questions Lyman is the first person narrator why is he telling the story is he reliable I think he's very reliable I don't think he has any reason to lie he's a, maybe a little bit like um, the narrator from Bartleby the Scrivener, a little. And that I think they're both reliable. They both come out looking looking like good people in the story, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. And they are looking to help someone and their help, uh, they're helping that person fails uh, on some level. And both of the people they're trying to help wind up dead. So yeah, Lyman is shaping the narrative here. Again, I, I think he's trying to shape it in a way uh, not necessarily for us to go, oh, aren't, weren't you good, you did your best, but to, to try to convince himself that he did his best. Um, when your brother commits suicide and you saw him unraveling, you've got to do something after that suicide to tell yourself, to show yourself that you did all you could uh, and, that, and that there's nothing more that you could have done. And I think that might, see, that might be what we're seeing uh, playing playing out here so um, very good so that kind of sets the scene and uh, we'll get right into some of your questions and comments um, I'm prepared for class here I have my coffee and in case my neighbor Dave appears and wants to talk which happens pretty often I've got my masks two different colors a white one and a red one uh, at the ready but you and I are at a proper social distance, so we don't really have to worry about being masked. So uh, it's, it's always interesting to see what you guys pick up on in the stories, uh, sort of in my absence with just reading it. And a lot of you picked up on uh, the, uh, the, the picture and uh, Henry and Lyman uh, by the car, I think it's after the car's fixed up, uh, their younger sister takes a picture of them and uh, Lyman hides the picture. Uh, it was the only captured moment of Henry being happy after coming back, uh, says Emma. And yeah, and he hides it because I guess he just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to remember that. Um, he's, he's failing to bring Henry back to that. Um, and it's just, just hard to take. Um, it must be an awful thing. Um, Chris said Lyman hides the picture and drove the convertible in the river for the same purpose. The hidden picture and destruction of the convertible is supposed to represent the broken relationship between Henry and Lyman after Henry's death. Yes, the relationship breaks not any reason because the two of them, um, but they break because of the poor treatment of Native Americans and of course really the post-traumatic stress disorder um, uh, of Henry returning from the Vietnam War. The relationship's gone for, gone for good. That's very sad. I think there was one other thing in here you guys had about the picture. Yes, it's evidence of how Henry has changed. Rita, very good. Lyman hides the picture because it's evidence of how Henry's changed and is no longer himself. 
The smile is not his smile, if it even is a smile. It's a constant reminder of Henry's crippling PTSD. Lyman can see it all over his face. Um, he drives the car into the river because he wanted his brother to have it. We'll talk more about that um, when it happens. Um, yeah, the picture is very, very interesting that you guys picked up on that. Nicole Kernan, I think it makes Lyman upset because seeing the picture reminds him that he was only happy in that photo and now he's just sad all the time. Even if he is happy in the photo, he was at least trying. And um, it's a funny thing in this story, trying to be happy, trying to help someone is actually validated in this story on some level. Many of you asked about the, you know, why the car, uh, you know, he beats the car up um, or you wanted to know why he drives it and sends it into the river. Well, he beats the car up so that Lyman, Lyman beats the car up, bends it, does really does a number on it so that uh, Henry will, will fix it for him and fix it because he won't want to see it not fixed. And Henry does this and it has a beneficial effect on him. Now, let's just acknowledge the deeper psychology thing here. Yeah, it gave him something to do, straightening a muffler pipe, get your mind maybe off the Vietnam War. However, I think what helps Henry with, with when he's restoring the car is knowing that his brother destroyed the car in an effort to help him. So just the act, his act of destroying the car because he thought it would help his brother, that alone will, will boost, his, boost his brother's spirits at least for uh, a little bit, at least for a little bit. So that was good. And uh, at the end, and we'll just go, I guess we can jump there quick. At the end, when he sends the car off into the water, um, you know, he wants his brother to have it. Um, he doesn't want it. He wants his brother to have it. It's almost like one last um, symbol um, because what is important in this story is the relationship between them, um, not the car, not the car. So, okay, let's dig into the story uh, a little bit. We already talked about why Lyman is telling the story. Um, in fact, you know what? Uh, why don't we just uh, cut it here? We're getting close to the YouTube limit of 15 minutes, so we'll just cut it here and uh, pick up in a couple minutes.